Welcome to Personal Financial Management. We start our personal finance semester with wanting students to understand that you determine the direction and the path in which your life will take through your choices that you make. So how do personal financial decisions impact your success? Quite significantly. So why do we set personal goals? Goals help individuals achieve the needs or the wants that they find important to them. So your needs are the ingredients making, for making or maintaining a physical life, such as your food and water, shelter and clothing. Wants are some things that are desire but are not a necessity, such as a college education. Not every career requires a high level of education, and not every student wants to achieve that higher level of education. You may want to have a high standard of living, such as living in a nice house or driving a nice car or having the latest and greatest of technology. Career choices determine how well your needs are going to be met and the wants that can be attained. So how can goal setting help us achieve successful financial management? Well, knowing what your career choice is and choosing the right classes to achieve that career choice may help you achieve or attain that higher level of income. By having goals around the education that you want to attain and the GPA that you want, that will help you achieve your financial success by obtaining the career that's interesting to you. How do you budget your income to live within your means? Establish a goal of your monthly expenses. Create savings goals to meet your or cover your planned or unplanned future expenses. Create an investment plan for your long-term goals like weddings or children or a future education or retirement. And then through consumer sa uh, savvy consumer skills, make smart purchasing decisions so that you can have future savings. Goals provide a sense of direction to help achieve that financial success. So individuals can achieve financial goals through economic thinking. There's more than one way to solve a problem and through, economic, uh, through thinking economically, this allows individuals to explore alternatives or what those options are that are available to them. However, at your age, you may not know what you don't know. So use those resources. Ask your parents for what ideas they may have to solve that problem. Ask friends and neighbors and adults that you uh, count on to get ideas of what might be potential alternatives to solve your problem. And then with each of those options, identify what are the benefits and the costs or the advantages or disadvantages to each of those options. Then you want to think about what should this problem solve. So develop a criteria to see how your alternatives match up to that criteria so you can find the best solution. Know every choice in your self-interest has positive or negative consequences. I do well in my classes all through high school. I maintain a high GPA. Then I get a scholarship to college. I don't maintain a high GPA. Maybe I get D's or C's. I drop a class here and there. I have to take summer school and I'm not offered a scholarship once I graduate. Maybe I can't afford to go to school, hence a negative consequence. Every choice has an opportunity cost. So when you make that decision, does the one that you passed up, that second best, have a higher opportunity cost than what you decided? If your opportunity costs are greater than the advantages that you gain from your solution, you probably didn't make the best decision. When you make a decision, it be, should be in your self-interest. So how can you do that? Using the PACE model will help you think about what steps I can use to help me solve an effective problem and make a well-informed decision. So first I need to define what my problem is. I should then list all my alternative solutions and what are the costs and benefits to each. Develop that list of criteria that will be needed to solve the problem and evaluate each alternative based on that criteria. When you've done that, you're going to choose the best solution based on your evaluation of each of those alternatives. So we talked about lots of vocabulary when you think economically, so we need to think about what are those alternatives and those are all the options that you have available to choose from using those resources in your network. The benefits are something that is favorable to the decision maker. Costs are those sacrifices that you must have or the loss or the penalty that's acquired by making that decision. Choice is the best or the most preferable alternative for you that hopefully you acted in your self-interest 
which are the considerations of one's own aims or advantages. It's not being selfish. It's being considerate of what's important to you. Consequences are what always follow a choice, either positive or negative. And that opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative when you make a choice. So how do people make informed decisions about their future careers? Well, hopefully through being educated and making an educated decision through your formal or informal education will open some big doors for you to explore your future. So how, what are some resources in the career decision making process? First, you want to identify what are some career options available through self-assessments. You can find out what's interesting to you, things that you like to do. You can find out your aptitudes, things that you're good at. Or what are your work values, things that are important to you, such as social and atmosphere, uh, money, prestige, leadership. Identify then the lifestyle, the way in which you want to live your life, so that your lifestyle and your career choice match up. If your lifestyle is much more excessive than the income that your career will choose for you, you will be living beyond your means. And then think about your values, those ideals or principles which are important to you and which you base your decisions on. If your values conflict with what your career choice is, you will have future problems within your career and not be as happy as you'd like to be. So what are some resources that I have around me to help me make a career choice? Well, you have your parents. If your parents have received higher levels of education, they're going to be able to explore with you what are some of those options available to you after high school. Your educators are all highly educated, either with bachelor's, master's, or maybe even doctorate degrees, and have worked through the pathway of education to help make some decisions for you as well. Your counselors, your personal contacts, Maybe even the current education that you have might provide all kinds of uh, background job shadowing opportunities, travel, for you to experience different career options. By taking those self-assessments to find out what kind of career is best for you, job placement services, or even the internet, such as careerbuilder.com or monster.com, can tell you what kind of jobs are available in the job market today. So what knowledge and skills do I need to have to reach my goals? Well, your human capital is the ability and the skills of any individual acquired through investment in education and training that enhance your potential income earning. The more valuable you are to that employer, the more revenue that you generate, the more income you're going to earn from them. So develop your human capital through formal education, such as your elementary, your secondary, or even your post-secondary schooling, and then your informal education, such as those experiences outside the academic environment, such as clubs, work experience, travel, who you live with, where you live. Those are all experiences that informally are building your human capital. Also think about your productivity, how much output you generate through the work that you do for your employer. The more productive employees are, the more revenue they're going to generate for that employer, which means you are going to be a more hireable candidate, versus those employees that are less productive, generate less revenue for them, and are easily let go or laid off. Entrepreneurs are those ones that take that risk to start a business and work for themselves. So what is the relationship between your education and your employability and your potential income? Well, with your employability, there's an indirect relationship. As you see, you go up the middle scale, and the more education you have, you can see that the percentage of unemployment decreases, which means that the more education you have, the more tools you have in your toolkit, which make you uh, more productive for employers. You can do more activities and skills that other employees that do not have as many skills can do. So you are going to be able to do more types of jobs. So if you were to happen to be laid off by one employer because you have these skills to do multiple jobs, you are going to be able to fit into the job market and find more jobs available with your skill set. Versus those that have more of a singular education, they're only going to be able to do the jobs that meet that particular skill level. Well, if everybody has that skill set and they're going to want more productive people, those with lesser education are more likely to find themselves unemployed versus those that have more tools in their toolkit. Employers want those that can do as much for them as they possibly can. Versus, if you look at the income side, there's a direct relationship with your education. 
The more education you have, the more income you're going to earn. Once again, the more tools you have in your toolkit, the more revenue you're going to be able to generate for a business because you're more productive. The more that you can do, the more needs that you can meet for the business, which means they're going to pay you that higher level of pay. You've got more of a scarce skill. So they're going to be willing to pay you higher wages because of your higher level of education. Fewer people have your abilities. What does that mean? What does that affect? Well, the more education you have, the more likely that you are going to be working consistently throughout your life, which means you're going to be able to earn higher levels of income. The more skills that you have mean you're more promotable. You have a higher standard of living, the more jobs that are available to you. Lots of positives as your education grows. So what are some sources of income uh, that you can generate in your life? Careers um, offer wages or salaries. Wages are your hourly wages. For every hour that you work, you are going to be paid per hour versus a salary is uh, an annual pay that's broken down into pay periods. Wages are going to be based on how many hours you work. Salary doesn't matter how many hours you work, you just have to reach certain objectives. Commission and bonuses are going to be based on your personal productivity. Commission, you get a percent of everything you generate for the business. And bonuses, you get a paid above and beyond goals that are achieved. And then employee benefits, such as medical care, dental care, uh, life insurance, uh, vacation days, sick days, those are all going to go towards your income as well. Entrepreneurial ventures might add to your finances. Uh, investments that you make through the buying and selling of stocks or receivings of dividends through uh, stocks that you own are going to increase your income. Interest that you earn on your savings accounts. If you uh, are retired and you had a retirement account, you may be ret receiving retirement distributions. If you're lucky enough to get an inheritance, you may get an inheritance from past family members. Uh, when you are retired, you will receive Social Security to some extent and then workman's compensation. So what are factors that may affect my personal financial decisions in the economy? Well, how will a recession affect my employment or income? Most certainly the business cycles affect how your job prospects may look. The job market might be very lean and you may find it very hard to find a job or you may be laid off from a job during a recession. What are career fields that are in demand versus those that are oversupplied? Occupation trends affect the type of income that you can earn. How does international competition affect my career choice or prices that you pay for products? The more competition, the less you'll pay for products. The more competition, the harder it will be to find jobs. What effect do the finan uh, financial markets have on your uh, wealth? Those are things that are considered as well. If the, job, if the financial markets are doing very well, then you will have great financial investments, which may allow you to be able to make greater decisions than someone that does not have a high financial wealth through the financial markets. So why is it important to make smart, informed decisions? Think about it and establish goals so that you can be a better decision maker and hence affect your personal financial decisions and your future. Our next section will be talking about goal setting and how you can make a smart goal.